Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Fink, and I'm the Marketing Specialist for Viva Select California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today, where we'll be taking a deep dive into Aviva's model-driven MES. After the webinar this morning, we'll be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or you can email us at webinar at california.avivaselect.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenter for today's webinar, Tim Brost. Tim is an Aviva Select California product specialist and has been with us for three years now. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Annie. Thanks for the introduction. And uh, good morning, everyone, or maybe good afternoon to everybody who's joining this webinar. So uh, as Annie said, we're going to be talking about uh, Aviva's model-driven MES, which is basically an MES solution that provides a, a ton of out-of-the-box content to uh, mitigate a lot of that uh, time-intensive development work that usually is involved in an MES solution. So we'll go through a few PowerPoint slides and then jump right into the product, uh, into a demo, and then kind of see what's under the hood and how all these different components actually work and connect to each other. So first thing is Aviva's MES, and specifically their model-driven MES, is uh, recognized by the Gartner Research as being a leader in the MES space. And primarily those reasons are for being device agnostic, being very modular to implement only the components and things that you need for your manufacturing solution, and uh, the concept of model-driven. A library of templates that include templates of forms and screens, as well as templates of standard business workflows and business processes um, to incorporate into your solution. So things like a workflow for splitting a lot or executing a work order, all those things, um, at least from a, a generic level, uh, come included. And then you can modify or add those things uh, to better represent your manufacturing processes and requirements. So to give a better depiction of how our model-driven solution works, it, it incorporates a few different things. So in the center you see you have your Aviva MES solution, and that includes you know, the database solution that includes things like support for inventory, production, quality for that SPC and sampling uh, for different pieces of operations and, and pieces of equipment. Uh, traceability, so tracking and tracing, you know, all the way from receiving and raw materials down to production and packing um, and, and ultimately shipping uh, to your customers performance of capturing OEE and downtime utilization, as well as scheduling. And, and that can be in the form of simple scheduling, or it can be in the form of some advanced AI scheduling to optimize that process. And then incorporated with the MES solution is out of the box reports that leverage an ETL or an extract transfer load uh, component that sets and prepares the database and data store that's optimized for retrieval. And that's what our, all of the out of the box reports um, leverage when creating those reports. And then the, the workflow solution, it's been recently renamed to WorkTest. And that's the solution that's generating not just the screens that you see in the demo, but also those business rules, any kind of exception report or workflow, uh, those types of things are what get developed and encapsulated into workflow. And then there's also the real-time data platform. You know, ultimately all of our customers uh, or most of our customers will want to have some type of automation integration between their automation equipment and their MES system. And so there's a real-time data platform that integrates with this MES solution and the control layer to bring in information that's coming from those uh, pieces of equipment and processes. And then when we want to integrate with the enterprise layer, there's a tool that we call the Enterprise Integrator that's a sophisticated message bus um, to allow for that message exchange between things like an ERP system, 
maybe a LIM system or a WMS system, as an example. And really the goal of our model-driven solution is about empowerment of your people, um, of your operators, of supervisors and management as well. And using those digital work forms and digital processes to encourage and enforce that collaboration to have a very uh, standard and reusable interface um, which ultimately will lower your to uh, total cost of ownership when implementing different sites or adding even adding just additional features. So currently we're on our version five of our model-driven solution. Now the demo is on version four, um, but there's not much uh, major enhancements between the two versions. Uh, version five was more of a quality of life version release, um, you know, adding you know more uh, usability of some of the screens and workflows, as well as adding things like uh, more support for localization and, and language switching. Um, but you know, as you can see here, the model driven MES solution basically comes with out of the box content, and how that that content gets changed. Let me go back. How that content, content gets changed is um, input from customers, input from partner vendors, and we incorporate that into the out of the box and productized package that you receive as an end user. You can then take that content, modify it to fit your in specific uh, business requirements. And then if you need to reuse those requirements or modifications, you can easily export that content, import it into a new solution for a different site or another site, and uh, really lower that total cost of ownership because your starting point is much, much uh, greater than a kind of blank canvas. And within our MES solution, right, it can be fully automated or fully manual or anywhere in between uh, with that solution. So let's jump right into the demo and see what the model-driven MES solution looks like. So here we have a home page, and this can be fully customizable. And here we can kind of see kind of the layout of how our um, demo environment is structured. We have a couple of blenders and reactors, and that's going to be a separate semi-finished process as you'll see in a second. And then we have three separate lines for, for finalizing and, and creating our finished goods. And then we have our inventory section um, to ultimately ship out our completed product. So as we navigate to our, our um, home or our navigation toolbar, we can see the different types of options in our navigation. And here we're gonna navigate to our supervisor and our work order management screen. And here's where we can see the total list of work orders and any selected work order detail, um, as well as up at the top, you see kind of icons for the pieces of equipment that are um, associated with that specific process and work order. And I can click things like the bomb tab and see the bill materials associated to that work order, as well as the specs for the, the specifications for all the different operations that uh, are included. Now, if there were downtimes, I could see them in that screen as well. And in this work order screen, I can uh, select different ones. And now notice as I select a different work order, for example, the entity kind of list or uh, visual diagram up at the top changes because the process associated with that work order is different. In this case, this is line one, ultimately shipping out our finished good. And uh, we can see the different statuses. Again, I can filter this list based on status or type of equipment process, for example. And so here we're gonna go into an, uh, a hyperlink of the first piece of equipment of this process. Uh, which is the line one filler. So we can see 
the status of the current running work order. In this case, we're making a item called FP01, so finished product one. And we can see up at the top, the diagram that shows, uh, or not the diagram rather, but the uh, uh, chart that shows the current status of the production of the cases uh, for uh, this filler entity. So we can then do certain job management things uh, up at the, the up in the middle here. We can edit, we can uh, delete, start, suspend operations, or even cancel uh, them. You know, depending on uh, what I need to do as an operator. Now I can click on this produce tab if I want to add manual production to this current operation. Um, I could set the lot, but in this case, I'm gonna leave that as the same, add a quantity, in this case, maybe 260 uh, have been completed, and I could uh, bring in lot information and adjust the time that I wanna execute that quantity at. Now, as I add it, it adjusts up at the top, now, if I wanna see details around this job, I can see the bill of materials of what we're consuming, any kind of utilization events, in this case, some running or idle events. There's some manual buttons that I can do to manage these events. In this case, maybe splitting a utilization event. I can take that uh, slider and adjust a when I wanna split this uh, current running uh, utilization event, and then maybe add a downtime reason. Now this can come from a controller or it can be manual. In this case, I'm gonna say conveyor jam. And you see that it, it split that lot and, or that, that utilization state and I can see it there. Um, now, if I wanna merge it back, I can do that as you see there and you see it merged. And if I wanna do edit an existing utilization event, in this case, I'm gonna put it back to that conveyor jam, I can very just click that edit button and manage that utilization state. Now on the performance tab, I can see some performance KPIs like OEE, the breakdown of those components of OEE. You can see performance is definitely lacking um, in our demo. And, uh, and then uh, a OEE tab, which shows some KPIs of, of utilization events, production history, and uh, duration of those types of utilization events as well. And then on the material balance tab, I can see a Sinky diagram of kind of the product flow or the material flow. And as I hover over any of those entities, I can see the quantity that's flowing between one uh, and two entities. So we can go back to, um, you know, we can go and do sample management for this filler um, or any other piece of entity that we want to do. So we can go to the, the sample screen and uh, we can see the management of all of our existing samples uh, that we're doing, some quality checks, for example. And we can add a new quality check here as well. So we can click new and choose the uh, test type and the uh, piece of equipment that we want to associate it to, maybe associate a work order and an item ID. Again, right now you're seeing me doing it manually, but this could be done based off of a scan of a barcode or a QR code, for example, to kind of automate this process as well. So as we save it, we can see the new uh, quality check added. And now we can go click on the results tab to uh, fill in those values. So clicking on that details button over on the left, it populates this results details screen on the, on the right hand side, giving us a uh, bar chart to show kind of the optimal values of, of or acceptable values of this quality check for, and then on the below that we can see a short-term history of uh, 
how this quality check is performed in the past. So here we can set a value. You see the bar chart adjusts based on the value inputted and a green indicator showing that it's a valid value. Now we click save and then on the results column, you see a, a check mark indicating that the, um, the value was good and accepted. So now that we've completed all those, we can go back to the sample list and uh, see our result. In this case, it'll show that it was good, the quality check passed, and I can continue on to the next operation. So let's do another one really quickly and show what it might look like on a failed result. So we'll redo it and click the detail screen again. And this time choose a value that's out of spec. And you can see the, the bar chart change color and the result column indicates with the X uh, based on that value inputted. So I'm gonna finish this up and go back to the sample screen. And you can see that there is an out of spec uh, key for that result for that specific quality check or sample. And if I want to report off this information, I can click on this SPC tab and there's different places that I can incorporate this SPC information. But this is some sample data, some dummy data where I can scrub through and see my different quality checks, see if there's anything out of the spec or you know whether it's above the upper limit or lower limit uh, of, in this case, just a, a simple X bar um, chart. Um, here's showing uh, some of the actual MES operations that we saw here. In this case, this is one of our hourly fill inspections where we can scrub through some of those quality checks uh, for those different uh, inspections as well. There's also a different kind of reporting screen that you can incorporate where you can have a SBC chart for different types of samples. And in this case, you can choose the chart type. In this case, we'll just choose a simple X bar. And all these little, um, uh, little boxes on the right-hand side of these charts allow you to display the visual um, options of a given chart, whether you wanna hide some things or compare and contrast uh, different charts in this case, as you're seeing here. Um, so I can choose X bar sigma or you know maybe a uh, MP chart or even a moving average chart for example, and compare those two against each other. Just as an example of, of what's possible with, these, uh, with this model-driven solution. Now going into inventory management, we can see the list of all of our inventory and the, the details associated uh, to those different lots. Um, in terms of management of that inventory, we can scrap uh, lots, we can reclassify things, split lots, combine lots, anything that you need to do in terms of managing that inventory, you can do so as well. Um, and uh, that's all these buttons and business processes come out of the box with the model-driven solution. Now, if I wanted to modify these screens, I could very easily do so. So now selecting one of these, I can go into a genealogy tab and see, again, another place where I can view the Sankey diagram and the associated work orders to each specific operation. Now, if a given lot in operation has multiple work orders, you see that populate over on the right-hand side. In this case, um, uh, this particular uh, entity had a couple of work orders associated to it. All right, so I think we're gonna go into our uh, menu icon and go to receiving, again, just to show how to manage uh, received inventory. And so you can see different vendor IDs, uh, me maybe associate different vendor lots, and we wanna manage where we're storing that received inventory. So we can pick a location um, that we wanna send this uh, received material to. In this case, we're gonna send it to raw tank one. If it was a, had an expiration date. If it was perishable goods, we can set that. And then we can define a quantity. In this case, we'll set uh, that quantity to uh, 5,000. And then 
uh, define a specific lot. Again, I'm entering it manually, but this could be very well automated uh, with any kind of scan. And I'll say receive. And up at the top, you'll see that that quantity changed from about 8,000 to 3,000 and change uh, for that specific vendor and purchase order. So uh, within that, you can see reports. And if we go to the MES report section, all these different reports, and we'll see a detailed view of this in a second, come out of the box. And BAM reports or business activity monitoring reports show how different business workflows and processes have been executed and the details associated to them. So we can see the details of this quality exception workflow of, you know, and this is currently ongoing of where we're at and the details of when it started and executed. Now expanding on these details, I can see the entire workflow and all the different options. And with that little uh, kind of uh, loading icon on that particular step, that's where I know this current workflow is in its current state. And I can change a different view like the execution view, which shows the actual steps taken for this particular instance of this work or, uh, workflow. So we can see that we're currently on uh, a step where an exception was found and more information is required to move on to the next step. Maybe submitting detailed information on why that exception of maybe a piece of uh, material or product was found. So we can then very just close this out and um, go to our inbox, which actually shows um, where, um, in this case here, I'm just gonna show uh, an export of this list as well. But what we're gonna do is go to our inbox and show that exception report and form and see the current status of that workflow, input the necessary information that I need to do to continue this ex exception report and workflow. So we can see any SPC related information to it, some operator input that has been brought in from the system that associates, okay, what piece of equipment, what kind of product, um, and uh, any kind of rule that was violated um, that kind of kicked off this non-conformance escalation process. So then I can add some user input, in this case, put a cause of what might happen, um, in this case, I can put a lever misalignment, for example, and a action done. In this case, maybe I adjusted some process settings. I here I just give a you know dummy description as to why I did what I did, and as I scroll down, um, I can you know add additional comments, maybe grab an image, and ultimately finish the process. So I can see that that inbox is cleared and going back to that BAM report, I can expand this out. And it, as I double click this, it'll show that the step that we're on has moved on on the workflow and another user might have a, uh, another um, uh, action to take to continue and move on that workflow. Maybe that information went to a supervisor and that supervisor needs to approve the non-conformance report before continuing on. Um, and that would be populated on an inbox or maybe a push notification to a phone, for example. So going back to our navigation menu, we can see things like, you know, incorporating things like work instructions. Again, we have a generic place, but these can be incorporated into different tabs and sections. Maybe you want it on the piece of equipment. Uh, you know, to make, you know, to optimize that, that, uh, that workflow a little bit. Um, but, you know, this is just showing, you know, some PDFs, some videos, you can have, you know, specific checklists that they actually, the user actually has to uh, input, for example. Um, and so you'll see here just a dummy video of incorporating um, as a part of a work instruction for a particular uh, piece of equipment. So um, we can go back to our, um, so expanding on um, the out of the box reports, remember I, all these reports that you saw um, 
previously are out of the box, they're SQL Server uh, reports. And we can see in this case, a genealogy report. We can enter a lot ID. And as we enter in that lot ID and click view report, it's going to generate that report. We can see all the downstream lots that are associated with the lot that we inputted. And as we click into a lot, um, we can see details associated to it. And those details include all the materials produced, materials consumed, um, any kind of equipment that was utilized in that particular lot. Um, we can see things like downtime events, um, OEE information, any kind of quality samples that we can then click on and see detailed reports. Um, in this case, this quality characteristic detail report. And we can return to the top level and navigate to a different segment and drill in as well. And as we drill into this, again, we can see thing, other things like maybe a, uh, any kind of maintenance information or maintenance actions that were taken. Um, in this case, there was a cleanup event that was associated with this particular lot. And then we can save and export this information as a PDF, as an Excel file, um, uh, and view it for, for later uh, as well. Again, these are the out-of-the-box reports uh, that come with the system. Now, um, we're going to jump into the live uh, demo. I'm going to jump into my VM. And you can, you know, kind of expand those uh, reports and, you know, maybe you want to incorporate Power BI and you can incorporate, uh, you know, more visually appealing reports. In this case, maybe like an EBR report. Um, again, taking advantage of, uh, you know, the capabilities of Power BI, the dynamic nature of these reports uh, that I might want to have available uh, to my team and to my users. Um, this could also be like an OEE report as well, uh, different downtime reasons and um, OEE kind of metrics uh, for a particular piece of equipment or, or line, for example. So I know we're running on, on time, so let's let's jump into uh, how all these things work. Uh, so I'm into our real-time data platform. In this case, this is uh, application server or system platform. Um, and we can see some of the areas that we saw before, the processing area that had our blenders and reactors. Um, we can see our packaging area that had our, our filler, our labeler, for example. And these OCO and UCO is what we call operations capability object and uh, utilization capability object. And these are how we can assign different characteristics reg regarding operations or utilization, uh, things like can this entity schedule jobs or store, inform or store items. Um, if I want to incorporate uh, specifications, which would be uh, things like, uh, you know, any kind of recipes for that particular entity. And, um, you know, if I want to automate production counters, I can associate attributes uh, to those production counters here. Um, and as I've done things like, you know, for the utilization object, this is a, where all of our downtime reasons and utilization events get defined. And as I build these things out, um, and, uh, you know, may, maybe it's manual or automated, I can just right click onto the object or collected group of objects and build my MES entity model. Now building that will um, create my entities and then I can work in my MES client to do things like build out associated items, um, maybe my processes that you see here. In this case, you saw my line one process, which has all my different entities. And here we just have a simple single line process where things are flowing from one operation to the other, but this can include branching and, and parallel operations. However, you need to model that, that process to replicate what you guys are uh, having on your plant floor. Now, um, we mentioned screens and uh, business workflows. So we'll use that quality exception as an example. In this case, if I double click this, I see that uh, 
business workflow that we saw before. And I'm just going to quickly show how we link these workflows to the screens that you saw earlier in that screen, particularly in that inbox, exception report inbox that we saw. So if I go to the, the activity process, uh, properties, I can see a variable for our exception form. And here we can see different variables that we added and, and pulled in that include the operator input, the supervisor input, any kind of resolution uh, variables and approvals that we see uh, here as well. And we basically um, use these variables to link to different operator actions or all these actions uh, and steps that we have here, as well as if I go back to a form, and I'm going to go back to my forms tab and open up this uh, JavaScript form. Uh, I can see the quality information or quality chart that would be populated here. Um, this is the blank canvas that if I went into the details of this had a XML variable that I'm linking uh, to create this form specifically. But then I see the familiar operator input and those variables that we saw here, as well as the cause and the action done that I had inputted and you know, any kind of details as to why that action was, was done. Again, that image button um, and uh, any kind of uh, finalized, you know, again, we didn't get to this step, but this would be where the supervisor input happened. And each of these different um, items that you see here on the screen have XML variables that I'm associating to um, uh, so here's a, an XML variable that I'm associating to that workflow that we saw earlier. Uh, so these business workflows. And that's how we link things that you see on the screen to the actual steps and the management and passing of that information, whether that's amongst the uh, MES database or whether I'm sending that to other systems. Um, maybe I want to send some information to SharePoint or um, any kind of external um, system that I might need. So with that, I think we've kind of hit our 30 minute uh, section and I'll open the floor for questions. All right, thank you, Tim. Our first question is, what is the general timeline to natively integrate Aviva's MES with my SCADA system? Yeah, so I mean, the timeline just depends on what your business requirements work, but generally um, what we kind of encourage our customers to do to implement a phased approach to you know, optimize a return on investment. So usually that means, and it doesn't always have to be the case, but usually that means um, implementing some type of manual implementation of the model-driven MES and, and then incorporating um, maybe in a, in a subsequent phase, um, the real-time automation and that kind of integration to where things like utilization events and, and other types of actions are being populated and driven from that automation platform. Um, timeline, again, is uh, in terms of how many months or, or weeks does that take, uh, that's variable to the uh, specific um, use case or, or customer. Awesome, thank you. And then our next question is, what devices can I deploy to? So anything. Um, so uh, right with uh, system platform, because system platform, that kind of automation layer, uh, because, you know, Aviva is known for connecting to, you know, pretty much any kind of device or piece of equipment that you have uh, on the automation controller level, um, we can pull that information in uh, from there. Now, from a enterprise layer integrating those types of systems. Again, it's, uh, it, you know, just working with what uh, that enterprise system is able to do in terms of integration with other systems and work that work task solution and this workflow solution that you see here is incredibly flexible in terms of integrating via a whole different uh, variety of mechanisms, whether that's arrest information, whether that's just simple message exchange, um, uh, whether that's um, some type of, uh, you know, OD ODBC connection, whatever it is that is needed to be done or, or made can be handled from uh, the work task solution. 
Awesome. Thanks, Tim. And that looks like all of our questions for now. Um, so thank you, Tim, and thank you to everyone who attended. If anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar, our recording will be available on YouTube and our website, california.avivaselect.com, once available, and you'll be receiving a copy of it via email. Thank you again for attending and have a great day. Thanks, everyone.